Hey guys and girls, welcome back to these example videos. Um, this is the 10th example and we're going to be going through some more uh, arrays stuff here. Um, it's called parallel arrays. So you have two arrays as, which are the same size and they're always at the same position, right? So uh, for example, there can be people and they have a certain salary. So one person's salary is at one position and directly under in the other array, that person's uh, or the name is in that position and directly under the salary is right there at the same position in another array. So you'll get it as we go along. But uh, And we're going to be introducing some menu-driven programming here. So really, really simple, really easy, nothing too complicated. We won't be explaining a lot of stuff now because I've already done a lot of that. So I'll just go through it here. So we'll make our, our maximum size for the array. We'll use unsigned int. Remember, it's an int there, but I'll just type it like this. Size of array. Yeah, let's say 10. And then we need something called a... Uh, this is the maximum size of the array, and this is going to be uh, how many items are in the array at this point. The valid items, right? The, we have 10 items in there, but valid items. So this is going to be unsigned. Number of... Number of people so let's say people and salaries okay so uh, number of people and we're zero from the start right we don't have we haven't added any people we will have 10 places for people but we haven't added any real people and then we'll make our arrays so yes I include a string as well we'll need string today so string um, people array people array size of array right because we want it to be of this size of 10 and this uh, int um, people salary is also going to be size of array. And then, yeah, that's it. Now we have our two arrays here. Now what we need to do is initialize our two arrays. I'll start commenting so you guys can follow me. Um, and I hope the zoom is okay. Uh, maybe I should do it like that. So we'll do that with a for loop. And I always use the template for the folder. You just press tab. If you write for, then stuff will come up here. You just press tab on one of these, and uh, you'll get the full one. So just so you know that. Um, and this, we have to go through the whole size of the array and initialize every one of these. That's why we're going to go from 0 to size of array. So people array at position i, we make that into an empty string. And people salary at position i equals zero. So we just initialized it, we just emptied everything out, uh, made sure everything is initialized so we don't get any errors, and then we're going to make our program. So program loop. Okay, and we'll use a while loop for that. And what we're gonna need, since it's a menu based program here, we'll need a choice, a choice integer, and it's at zero. And at the start, we're going to ask for choice. Bro, choice, please. Okay. And we're going to just get that choice in there. Like that. And we'll see while choice is less, no, larger than zero. We'll keep going. If we type in zero in choice, we want the program to quit. Okay. So we'll make sure people know what they're doing. Zero is quit, 1 is going to be add, 2 is going to remove last, and 3 is going to be print all. So we have our choices here. And 0 is going to be, now you're thinking, oh, it's already 0, it's just going to quit, but we can assume that this choice that we're going to type in here might not be 0, so it'll go into the loop. If it is 0, fine, it'll qu quit before it even went into the program loop. So that's great. Uh, now we're going to put that in here as well. Uh, just so every loop we can just choice because remember as soon as we get in here it's gonna start looping in here but from out here we do it one once from outside so we can choose something in here and then that means we'll do everything at the top of the while loop so what are we gonna do we're gonna make a switch case let's use a switch today with choice depending on the choice default Break. Okay, so default is going to be wrong. Okay, just like that. 
uh, we have case one. We don't need case zero because if it's zero, it's just gonna quit. We don't need to actually make a case for that. Um, two and case three, which was print. So what we can do here is we can just make sure we do this just so we know what's going on. Remember to comment your code. I haven't been doing it lately, but uh, we should. We should always comment our code. Um, and then one was add. Sorry about that. Okay, so let's start with add. Now remember, now remember, this is important. We have our size of array and number of people. This is what we're going to be using mostly because this is going to keep track of how many valid people we have in our in our system. So let's say like this. We can only add things while this is less than this, right? And we can't go over the maximum size of the array. So that's really important. We'll be doing this. If number of people is less than size of array, then we can add something. Else, we'll tell the user uh, list is full saws manage and we'll end the line right there. So what happens here is that, okay, then of course we're gonna add one to people as soon as we add one, right? So number of people is gonna grow and grow and grow until it gets to the max limit and then it's gonna say list is full, okay? So let's see here. Let's tell our people here to input a name. Input name of bro. And then we're gonna use get line here, okay? Okay, get line, uh, see in, and then what are we going to get line into? People array, right? We, our string, people array, we want the line here. So we can get both the surname and the, and the first name. So we're going to say people, whoops, people, oops, a people array, there we go. At place, number of people, okay? So as we add people, we're always going to be at the last empty spot. Okay, so number of people is going to be 1. Then the next time we add something, it's going to be at the place of 1. So it's going to be at the end, right? So say we added John here. We have like 10 places empty, right? Number of people is going was 0. John was added. Number of people grows to 1. Then we're at this spot. So next time we go in here and add someone, we can get line and get another person here. We can say... Robert was added here and then it's going to be two right because we added one to number of people so it's going to keep going until we're here and then it's going to be full because of this condition here so yeah we add one to number of people we get that and then what we have to do is we have to make sure we input the salary for bro okay and then it's another array, right? It's And we want it to be in the same position as our top, as our person's name, right? So, uh, salary, people's salary. Um, bad naming here, not really good names. But, well, uh, I'm sure you can come up with a better name. But anyway, here we can get, get line because it's an integer array. So we don't get line for that, we get C in for that. Okay, and remember, see in and get line can be problematic, right? So what we want to do, uh, whoops, see in dot ignore on top, always on top before of the get line. So all of these see ins here will not mess with our get line. See ins mess with get lines. Get lines don't mess with see ins. So remember that. Just make sure this is before any get line, and you'll be fine. Um, so yeah, now we have our person, and we can say here person was added woohoo and that line so we have a person added and else the list is full now removing the last one is very easy because remember number of people always keeps track of where we are and if we just decrease that we'll never be able to access the 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 person that was removed so we don't have to do anything actually all we have to do is we have to check that of people is larger than zero that means that there are people in the list if it's zero we have no people we don't have to worry if it's more than zero it's greater than zero number of people we just decrease that and we'll never be able to access that we will be you could access it and of course if you specifically 
uh, wrote in that position you know we could just nullify these two uh, positions here so what I'm trying to explain here is that you have like 10 places whatever you have John here and you have Mac here and you have Rob here okay you want to remove the last one you don't remove this number of people is three and you just if you make it two you can just access these two this is still here but using number of people in loops you will just get up to here okay so remember that that's how we do we could remove Rob but it won't help us it doesn't really matter so we decrease that and we'll just say else list was empty sad face okay or or in here person was person was exterminated okay a little dramatic there is perfect okay cool and to print it out this is where I want to explain to you what's going on number of people we don't want to print out using size of array okay we use our number of people because that's all the valid people we have in array that's how I built that's how we built our system around this number of people okay it's decreasing it's increasing it's kinda dynamic you know it's just that we have a max limit to how many people we can have but the number of valid people is number of people so all we have to do is loop through that and we'll always be fine so what are we gonna do well we're going to say name and then we're going to say uh, people array at position I and line and then we're going to say salary oh wait we don't want to end line here actually we just want to do salary like that and people's salary at position I and then we'll end line and what we could do as well is just make sure we do this just to give the position of the of the person so blah 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 we got that ready let's see if this actually runs okay so bro choice please let's just see if quit works quit worked good quit worked okay so let's add a person here add add name and we'll say John John has a salary of five thirty something gazillion and we'll print them all see John at position zero has a salary of 300,000 monedas and let's add Bob who has $20 a minute or something and we'll print them both out and woo Bob is right there but Bob he sucked really hard at his job okay so they had to terminate him and he was terminated he was exterminated and let's print them all out oh Bob is gone whoops RIP Bob okay cool then you can just quit the program now we have a program here that has a menu let me zoom out a little bit we have a menu we have two arrays working together to do one thing to keep track of salaries and persons and we have a nice uh, and structured program so I hope you learned something today uh, I'll keep just pushing out examples and uh, keep watching and I'm sure you'll be pro in no time and uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next video.